Hello the internet, my name is Dean and welcome to this tutorial on using Active Storage in Rails 5.2 to upload images to your Rails application. Now if you've already seen the tutorial on using Active Storage for file uploads, this is going to be almost exactly identical. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a couple links for you so you can check those out after the video. Okay, so to start off, I created a new Rails application. I named it Pinterest, and I started the server. I then went to localhost port 3000, where it tells me that I'm running Ruby on Rails, and specifically, I'm running Rails version 5.2. This is important. Make sure you're running 5.2, otherwise some of these commands won't work for you. So we're going to start off by creating a scaffold. So we'll type Rails G scaffold. And because I called the application Pinterest, let's call the images themselves pins. So we'll say Rails G scaffold pin. We'll give each pin a title. It's assigned type text by, or assigned type string by default, so you don't have to specify that. And then we'll give it a caption of type text. And that's pretty much all you have to do for this scaffold generator. So assuming this runs in my terrible Windows Ubuntu shell, well, we should then see that it's created the scaffold. Uh, we can come over to our app assets style sheets and delete the scaffolds.scss file and then we can come back to our terminal and type rails db colon migrate to migrate the database and add in all our new goodies to it once that's done we can then start the server again and come over to our config file and type or go to our routes.rb file we'll change the tab size to size 2 because sublime is being a rebellious teenager today and then we'll say root 2 colon and then we'll say pins index. So this is saying set the root of the application to be the pins controller index action. And then we can hit enter to refresh the page and hopefully come to our pins scaffold. So from here we can create a new pin, we can call this hello world, and give it a caption that says uh, this needs more cowbell. We'll create the pin, that worked. Everything's working as intended in terms of the scaffold itself, but we want to add in images. So how do we do that? Well, prior to Rails 5.2, you would use a gem like Paperclip or Carrier Weave or something like that. But with 5.2, um, Paperclip recently announced that they were deprecating the gem and were no longer supporting it. So instead, we're going to use Active Storage, hence the tutorial. Uh, to start off, we'll kill the server and then we'll type Rails Active underscore Storage colon install. So there's no space between this. You can just run this. It'll create a migration. It'll also create the config file that the uh, Rails Edge Guide tells you to create. So over here, you should see that there is now a uh, is it the storage. Yeah, the storage.yaml. So this is all set up the way that you would expect. And we can now do a Rails DB colon migrate to add this into the database. The next step is to come over to our pins model. And on line two, we'll say has one attached space colon. And we'll call it an image because that's what we're looking to upload here. You can call this photo or picture, or if you're using device and you want to give users an avatar, you can call it avatar. It doesn't really matter. It translates fairly well to everything else. Uh, once that's done, we can come over to our views pins form. And below the title, but above the caption, we'll do a div with a class equal to field. And then we'll say this form needs a label for the image. And it needs a form.file underscore field for the image. Once that's done, we can refresh the page. Just kidding, we have to start the server first. And once we've started the server, we can refresh the page click new pin and we now see that there's a pin image choose file option. So we'll say this one has enough cowbell. We'll choose a file. Uh, I'm on my desktop right now. So let's go over to pictures, backgrounds, and this one. And we'll give it a caption. Just kidding. There's never enough cowbell. Running with a bit of a theme today. Uh, we could create we could choose or click create pin, but that wouldn't work because we still have to go over to our controller and go to the pins controller and then scroll down to the pin params where it says params.requirePin.permit title caption. 
and we'll also permit the image. Once that's done, we can hit create pin. And up here in the uh, Rails terminal, you'll be able to see that it's actually adding the pin into the database, assuming the bash wants to work. So here it is, uh, active storage blobs. It gave it a blob, that's great. Let's go to the pin show page so that we can actually see what this blob looks like. So for this, we'll just open some Ruby code and then we'll say at pin.image, which is the natural first thing that you would try. And this tells us that it's an active storage attached one object. So that's great, but how do we actually see it? Well, for those of you that use paperclip, you'll probably remember this. It's just an image tag uh, surrounding the at pin.image, which shows you the image. Of course, you can put a div around this with a style equal to width of 400 pixels and a height equal to auto. And we can close that and then we can refactor this a bit and that doesn't do anything. So let's instead change this to have a style and we'll say with 100%. And now it's properly formatted. And we could take this a step further and say link to the at image. And then after the image tag, we can then say pins underscore path. And all that did was it created a link to the pins path. And that's pretty much it in terms of using active storage instead of paperclip. You now have everything working as you would expect it to. Uh, if this video did help you, please you know, like the video. If it didn't help you, dislike it so that other people know not to watch further than the first couple of seconds. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.